Hi guys and welcome back to the Brushmaster Studio. Today we're going to be painting this guy. So yes, we're painting a Games Workshop model today, um, Helbrecht the High Marshal, a stunning model and a, a great piece of sculpting and design from Games Workshop. Um, I saw I learnt a lesson when I painted the lion recently and that I tried to do him all in one piece, on his base, with his cape, with his sword, and it was really hard to paint. So I've broken Helbrecht down into the four elements that I'm going to paint separately. Um, which is Helbrecht himself, the two henchmen, and the base with the orc on it. So let's get over to the workbench and let's see how we did. Right, so prepping the miniature guys, did the normal thing here of I scraped all the mold lines off, did some filling, and then I drilled holes in the bottom of his shoes and mounted him on a little makeshift wire base. This is so that I can mount him when I'm painting and not be touching the miniature. Now, airbrushing him, I mixed a four to one mix of the airbrush flow improver and the amethyst blue from Arcus Hobby. I, I love this color to work on, this really deep violet color. Um, I give it a couple, two or three coats, and then I get a really good covering all over. And I'm using this brand new size one Kalinsky Sable brush from Arcus Hobby. The base coat for the armor was a, a pretty even mix of hull red and matte red. Um, and this gives this a bit more of that orangey red tone into this, this sort of base color. Um, I made sure I covered most of the area with this. I concentrated more on the areas where I thought there would be light. For the first main highlight, I used pure medium rust. And here I just, I really tried to define where those sort of shine spots are going to be on this armor. So to smooth it out a little bit, I've mixed up a glaze of the same color and I'm just pushing this into that highlight area just to smooth the edges out. For the next highlight, I've added a little bit of salmon to give it that sort of, uh, adding white tones, but a sort of pinky tone too. And I'm just trying to really push this sort of whitish pinky look in this armor. The final highlight is added with pure salmon here. Um, and this really is for those really bright, shiny spots that I want to show on this armor. And the final step in the armor is I've mixed up a glaze of uh, black red. And I'm just pushing this into the shadow areas, trying to add more contrast where I can. So what I found difficult about Helbrecht is trying to balance the levels of saturation and color in this guy. I, I didn't want him to be really bright and orangey for the copper armor, but I also didn't want it to be super flat. So I tried to sort of reach somewhere in between with a, a sort of almost a desaturated copper looking armor. Um, but I found that trying to balance the colors across this model was the really difficult part. So for the steel parts, the, I base coated most of the parts with a anthracite gray, which is a, a sort of really nice dark gray blue color. And for the first highlight, I mixed up blue gray or gray blue and mud. I, I love adding this little bit of a brown tone to this uh, sort of very silvery color. For the next highlight, I was added in ivory from AK Interactive. Um, and I just built up those really bright spots on the steel armor. And the final highlight was pure ivory, just as little dots on certain areas to give a little shine. So painting the shoulder pad now, I'm using a mix of 
uh, chocolate, olive green and ivory. I just felt like I wanted a little bit of a greenish tone in there to this sort of whitish armour. And I'm going to be using a slightly different technique here. I took a rather different approach to painting the shoulder pad and the tabard on this guy. So I've done most of the painting here with sort of stippling or stipple glazing. And what this means is you, you paint it with slightly thinner paints and you're stippling the highlights on where you want the main lights to show. Um, in between the stippling, I'm using glazes just to smooth it out a little bit. But it gets a really interesting textured effect and it, it's something that's worth trying. So as I progress through the armour, I am literally adding more ivory to each layer and just building up brighter and smaller highlights. So you can see here I'm pushing the highlights towards the top of the shoulder pad where most of the light would would catch this element. And what I do in between that is I mix up a glaze of each color and then I just glaze that color up into the highlights. So I'm pushing from like the mid-tone as you can see here up into the highlight areas and this just smooths the area out but it, it does keep some of that texture to the object. And the final highlights that I put on are almost pure ivory. And what I do is I thin this down even more. So the lighter and lighter I go, the more thin the paint is. And I'm wicking a lot of this paint off on a paper towel before I'm applying it. And if you haven't done already, guys, don't forget to subscribe and hit the thumbs up. This will help grow the channel. So I want to paint in the tabard now guys and using almost the same paints except I've swapped ivory for buff to give them a bit more of a bone parchmenty look and I'm doing this using exactly the same techniques as I did for the shoulder pad but this time I'll, because this is more of a material I want to leave a little bit more of a textured look to this. More buff is added to the mix to build up the highlights in the upper areas and on the folds. Um, and I'm trying to be like, uh, I'm, I'm trying to really push the highlights, but make this smoother. I don't want this to be quite as harsh as the shoulder pad, which is a bit more of a semi-metallic object. Um, and as you can see, I'm adding lots of texture with the brush. And as I did with the shoulder pad, here you can see I'm just glazing the layers in between. And it's just smoothing out the, the sort of roughness and any sort of gradient edges that I have. And for the final steps, I'm really adding, working up to almost pure buff and just hitting the very top areas of the highlighted parts. Um, and then at the final part is just a very thin smooth glaze where I just try and bring all these gradients and highlights together. On to the red stars guys and I set out painting this with a mix of amethyst blue and deep red. Now I push the colour here as I was painting the stars towards the upper areas and the, the parts that I thought would be facing nearest the light. And as I progress through the painting, I just add more and more deep red to start with. Um, and, to, and the final highlights are added with light rust. So for painting the white stars, I've gone with a mix of grey, blue and mud. It gives a sort of, a sort of brownish, muddy, sort of blue-grey colour. Um, but I really like this colour for using in silver, steel and in white. So the first thing here is just really to base coat all these little stars. And I base coat it with quite thin paint over this amethyst blue. And I then build up areas of brighter areas with more layers. To highlight, I'm just adding more and more ivory to the mix. 
And as you can see here, guys, I'm trying to be very careful to paint a lot of the edge highlighting very small and neat to help this show through as a sharp, sort of semi-metallic object, uh, which this is really is the key to getting this sort of look. The final highlight is almost pure ivory, where I just try and hit, hit the tips of the objects and the little pointy areas to add that little sort of shine effect. For painting the eyes, I wanted them quite a bright green. So the first layer I added on was just pure deep green on its own, which is quite a nice, bright, intense green. Um, and I've tried to paint most of the eye here. And all I do for these eyes is I add more and more ivory to the mix. And I just paint smaller and smaller areas towards the front of the eyes to build up like a bit of an intense stare. And the final step that I do is to put like a little ivory dot, one in the front corner and one on the top back corner, like a little reflection point. So starting off the power sword, guys, the first thing I'm doing here is I'm, I'm mapping in where the main reflection parts are gonna be with star blue. Now, I want to go in a slightly different direction with this, so it's not going to all look blue as the standard sort of steel. I want to try and do something a little bit different here. Now, to make this look a bit different, I then, I then move into pure deep green, which is sort of an odd sort of combination, but this sort of light green over top of the blue I find works really well. And because this is a power sword, and I want it to look a little bit sort of different, I thought this would build up a really nice, interesting effect. So I've added blue-gray now to the mix, and now I'm pushing this green tone back towards those slightly bluish tones, which is going to give it this really interesting look, I think. So now I've added ivory now to this greeny-blue mix, and I'm trying to really push where those shiny bright spots are and I'll be adding the edge highlight in here at this stage to really outline the shape of the sword and give it some definition. Now it's important when you're painting anything like this to keep these bright highlights small. If you make them too big it starts to look, you, you start losing all the colour so when you get to the Add in ivory and whites to colours like this. You have to keep those highlights very small. Right, so I've mixed up a glaze now of star blue. And I'm pushing this from that sort of mid-tone into the shadowy area to try and push those blue tones back into the sword. And as you can see here, I've painted like a crackling lighting effect, lightning effect all over the sword with the ivory. Uh, my apologies, my camera didn't record this, so I don't know why. Um, but here, this is very much pushing the blue and trying to smooth all these transitions out. Now, with a mix of star blue and ivory, I paint this sort of, the little power conduit bit at the top center part of the sword. And I, I just want to paint this central bit in a sort of mid high sort of bluish tone but this this part is all about adding the sparkle and the lightning effect around the edge which I'm going to do by adding more and more ivory until I get to almost a pure ivory uh, adding this sort of OSL light effect to those edges which really finishes the sword off nicely. So painting the gold on the sword guys and the first mix I use is a blend of Sahara, which is a, a lovely golden yellow colour, and burnt red. And for here, I'm trying to leave some of this amethyst blue showing because this violet purpley tone works really nice with golds. So I'm just trying to build up the areas where I think there will be the most light and where I want the shine spots on the gold to be. For the first highlight, this is pure Sahara yellow. And again, I'm just pushing this yellow where I want the main light to show and where I'm gonna have my main reflection points 
on, on this gold. I've now added in pearl yellow to give a, a much lighter mix now. And again, just smaller and smaller highlights, get in a lot of the edges now and really putting a small narrow highlight in those shine spots on this gold. For the final highlight, I'm adding in almost pure pale yellow now. And I'm just really getting little tiny spots and almost dots in places to add those shiny little parts to the sword. For the red skulls guys, I started off with a mix of amethyst blue and deep red. Um, and to highlight this, I've added pure deep red, um, which is a beautiful red from AK. And then I just added cadmium red, which is a, a quite a nice rich orange for the final highlights. So for painting the red cape, I started off with quite a dark mix of amethyst blue and deep red. And I've applied this very thin. So I only want certain sections of this cape to look red. And because a lot of it falls into quite deep shadowy areas, you'll see that I'm just painting little zones of the cape where it's going to catch the light on the inside. I'm leaving plenty of this amethyst blue showing. And by painting very thin diluted layers, I can actually blend this color into quite a nice transition. And to further work this up, I just add more and more red into the mix until I get a pure deep red. I also, you also see here that I try to do a little bit of freehand on either side of the cape. And I wasn't 100% sure exactly what I was trying to do here, but I tried to do like a little sort of whitish line along the bottom edge and then put a couple of sort of Templar type symbols in them. They're okay, but they, they could have been a lot better. Okay then guys, for the purple cloak, I wanted to keep this one fairly simple. So I've taken my amethyst blue, which is the underlying violet color, and I've just progressively added graphite to this, sort of building up to a sort of light purplish gray. And I'm really only focusing these highlights on little folds and creases, um, which gives it a really nice overall look actually. But I would very much like to, if I'd have had more time on this miniature, I would have loved to have done a big freehand on the back, but unfortunately time was against me. So after the initial base coat of hull red and deep red, I'm slowly adding more and more Sahara yellow to this mix, building up to pure Sahara yellow. Um, it's important when you're doing anything like this is to focus on the shine spots. That's the way I sort of think about metals is I'm highlighting uh, parts up, but I'm always thinking about where the main shine area is going to be. So I progressively add more and more pale yellow now to the mix and making these highlights smaller and smaller so that they appear uh, shiny. Um, and when I get to the final stage is really just pure pale yellow and I'm literally just adding little dots to create those shine spots. So doing the the skull on the backpack here is instead of going for the red skull I'm going for a standard skull here and I use a mix here of chocolate, star blue and buff. Now I add the star blue in because it makes it a sort of a dirty greenish brown which I really like to start skulls with. It gives it a very sort of sinister look almost. And as I work up here, I'm literally just adding more and more buff to the mix. Um, I occasionally glaze in between layers, and I certainly do at the end with the lightest mix, just to smooth the skull out. So here is what I ended up with, guys. Thanks for watching, and I hope to see you for part two, 
when I'll be painting the henchman and the base. As you can see in the video guys, I'm using quite a unique painting handle. Um, and this is something of my own design, which I've been developing for the last sort of six to 12 months now. Um, it, it's the most comfortable and practical handle I've ever used. And I'm, I'm in the process of final design now and actually working with uh, a friend of mine in America to produce these. So keep a look out in my socials, on my YouTube. The handle is going to be coming up for purchase very soon.